Father, I come to you as long as I know how. Yes. Thanking you for lying down last night yes. and my yes. rise yes. this morning. Yes. We want to thank you, Father, for just being you. For being there for us, for loving us, Father. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Asking you to please forgive us of our sins, Father. And put us on one cord. Help us to love one another you love us. Teach us, Father. Continue to work on us. Clean us up, Father. Our hearts, our minds, our souls. Help us to be on one cord in agreement with one another. Breathing our love from breath to breath and from heart to heart. Please, Father, strip us all where we feet. Build us up when we fall down. Be with our pastor and our church family as a well. Guide us and direct us, Father. Show us the way. Help us to live that we may grow someone to you, Father, that we may be able to give you the glory. That we won't worship each other and I say, yeah. oh, please, Father, be with us as we go through our service. Bless our speaker. Yes. 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 Just guide us, Father, and show us the way. Lead yes. us and be with us. Bless our sick and our shut in. Yes. 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 Everyone, everywhere, Father, yes. just yes. be with us and guide us. Lead us and never leave us. Please, that's my prayer. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
another chance for us to meet together in your house to worship you. Father, we believe the book of 1 Corinthians, and I pray that all offerings given today are out of love. We experience your blessings every day, and your blessings are always given to us freely and with ultimate love. Father, you loved us all the way to the cross. May we love you enough to give you what is already yours. Bless these tithes and offerings today. Bless those that gave and those that wanted to give and was not able to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
read a spoken for prayer. And the ones who are unspoken, we know you need. We know you know our need. We know that you are the healer. Some people call you a healer, but you the healer. And we pray for you, and we pray for ourselves. We bless you, the Lord, and we ask that you will continue to bless us. Continue to be mindful of us. Continue to forgive us as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. But we have trespassed much. We ask you, Father God, just to bless us this Sunday as we go in and out. The families that are here, the families that are represented, the ones who wanted to come that were unable to come, Father God, and even the ones that were able and refused to come. We need you every minute, every hour. We pray for the unity here at St. Mark. Our pastor started a unification, uh, I think it was the celebration of unification for one of our uh, districts, Father God, one of our states, and, and everything that we are a part of to lift up your name and the kingdom building activities. We know you, you know the need of every person standing this morning, Father God. Please help us. Please let St. Mark continue to be a beacon of light in your community, unified with other Christian churches in your name. We need help, Father God. All of us need some type of help. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially. We need jobs, Father God. Jobs of quality and quality. You know what we need. Because we're the ones that's going to support the kingdom building. Christ's kingdom building activities. We don't have to be fed. We are, know that you supply all our needs. Please strengthen our faith. Please anoint us to be stronger and to be doing the things that's pleasing and acceptable in and, and, and our sight individually and as a unit. We pray for St. Mark, Father God, this morning. Pray for the services this morning, Father God. Pray for us who are in need. And I thank you so much that you didn't just create us and ignore us. We matter so much to you that you did your only begotten son who was slapped, spit on, beat, and just, Father God, pierced in the side, lied on, betrayed and denied, and so much more. Who went down in hell and defeated death, grave, Satan, and hell, and anything else that can ever come against us. We praise your holy name. We ask for your blessing. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your discernment. We ask that your love will continue. We thank you for your salvation. And we ask that you will, Father God, continue to keep us in your prayer. In the name of our Lord and Savior, now I'll stop. Jesus Christ, amen.
Generation Baptist Church. And I'm a cousin of, he's my cousin, Rob, and she's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thank the Lord that you woke me up this morning. Amen. 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 You know, I, I tell people I was up here 4.30 yeah. this morning. All right. And I was asking, Lord, what do you want me to do? That's how I'm doing whatever it is, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Do you want me to sing for you? Yes, sir. Do you want me to preach for you? Just leave it to me, Lord. I want you to run, run and pray. To the I die. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So right. mercy and kind to me if I cheer up. It ain't a sad tear for God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And if you don't mind, I have a testimony. I just want to say a few little words. Okay. Nine years ago, yeah. I had a high bypass operation. Mm -hmm. I never went back to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Amen. You know that, uh, as they say, devil folks, so they say, man, why you don't come to the club no more? I said, I don't need the club, I got Jesus. <laughs> and I my bread with a clover. Yes, yeah. And my wallet with a Give my piece of joy for my third honored to be able and welcome you here today. We pray that you felt the presence of God as you entered into the doors. Here, we pray that your visit with us will be memorable, will be a, a memorable one. And here is and here is where we sing, praise God, giving him the glory for all of our blessings, for he is worthy to be praised. Clap your hands, pat your feet, and dance like David did. Again, I welcome you into the house of the Lord and hope that you enjoy yourselves in his presence. You're both welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Now it's time for the announcements. Thanks for being who you are. Dear St. Mark family, on behalf of Sister Madison and myself, we would like to express our sincere and humble appreciation for last, sun for last Sunday's anniversary celebration. To the Pastors Aid Committee, thank you for your time and preparation for all the activities and everything was beautiful. Your love and kindness is, is appreciated always. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your, your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. A shining light and a beacon of God's warmth and love. You are all appreciated. Love you all. That's from Pastor and Sister Madison. Amen. Um, I would like to meet briefly with all those that plan to participate in the Vacation Bible School after worship service today. We will meet in the rear of the church, and that's from Sister Lisa Turner. The next rotation of spiritual growth classes have started. The classes offered are How to Be Committed, Pastor Madison, Like No Other, Reverend Barry, and Resilient Faith, Reverend Range. The mainstream ministry will also meet every first and third Wednesday. The Zone 1 board meeting will be today, Sunday, March 29th at 3.30 at the new, at the new El Beth Baptist Church. That's 2023 Mauser Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75203. And Reverend Dr. Timothy J. Brown is the host pastor. Get ready. Please help the Matrix Ministry celebrate another quarter recognizing the Mark's living legends. Come join us in the celebration and see who the next honorees will be on Sunday, April 12th, during morning worship service. The Oasis Ministry will meet on Thursday, April 2nd, at 11 a.m. The food drive will be on Thursday, April 2nd, at 1 p.m. Also, the Oasis Ministry will be having a fish and chicken fry 
on Friday, April 17th, and possibly again on April 18th for a modest donation. Menus and pre-order forms will be available starting April the 5th. The 46th Annual Scholarship Betty E. Joshua Prayer Breakfast presented by the Metropolitan Baptist Ministers, Wives, and Youth and Widows Union will be Saturday, April the 11th at 10 a.m. at the Double Tree Hotel Campbell Center. Tickets are $25 and may be purchased from Sister Barry, Sister Range, or Sister Madison. Thank you for your continued support to help young men and women achieve higher education. Also, Sister Exy McGee and the New Friendship Church will be selling dinners on Easter Sunday to raise money for the Betty E. Joshua Prayer Breakfast. If you would like to purchase dinners, you may get an order from Sister Madison today or call Sister McGee personally and place your order at 214-354-3214 or 321-333-4664. Dinners will cost $9 for adults and $6 for a child's plate. You can pick one meat, two sides, rolls or cornbread, dessert and tea. And they'll have meats like fried chicken or baked chicken and they're going to have country ribs. And then they have a variety of sides and desserts. If you are not, if you are not planning on cooking, you can have a home cooked meal at a great price. Amen. To all, to all ministry leaders and leaders in training, you are cordially invited to attend the leadership team book study discussion on April 18th at 9 a.m. in the St. Mark Education Center. This year's read is by Mark Sanborn of the Fred Factor, how passion in your work in life can turn the ordinary into extraordinary. We will explore and discover ways the principles from the Fred Factor can assist in becoming a better servant leader. As always, a condom of breakfast will be provided for your convenience. I look forward to seeing you there. That's from Reverend Barry. The street renaming ceremony in honor of the late Albert Lipscomb Sr will be on Saturday, April the 11th, from 10 a.m. at the intersection of East Grand Avenue and Meadow Street. Amen. 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 <laughs> Cooperative Program Giving Award, presented to St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, in recognition for being one of the top 10 cooperative program giving African American churches of the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention for 2014. For the ministry of this service is not only to find the needs of the saints, but it's also overflowing in many acts of thanksgiving to God. That's 2 Corinthians 9 and 12. And Pastor Madison wanted our church to know that we were, we were recognized for this um, award. Amen? Food <laughs> for thought. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he often told people not to tell anyone who he was. Even when his brothers encouraged him to go public, he said it was not yet the right time. But the day he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey was the, was the appointed time. The only public announcement that he was God's promised Messiah, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9. 9. His announcement was rejected by many, yet God's plan was fulfilled, as the following point by K. Hoffman clearly states. They waved palm branches as he passed and held him as their king. Yet they knew not of the sorrow the coming weeks would bring. The glad acclaim would soon give way to, jeer, to jeers and mockery. In Pilate's court he'd be condemned to cross on Calvary. But Jesus knew he was, he was the Christ and God's redemptive plan. The sacrificial lamb come down to die for his sins of man. The centuries have passed, and still he seeks those who lost in sin, pleading with unyielding hearts to repent and follow him. On this day we shout our praise, oh, let us not delay. The palm-strewn path of long ago still leads him today. Have a blessed week. Amen. Good to see all of you here today. Just a correction, uh, Zombo will be a 
at Grace Chapel Baptist Church today at 3 o'clock. That's the zone board, Gallery Grace District zone board will be at Grace Chapel Baptist Church, Pastor E.C. Wilson. And uh, I want to thank our youth on last night. We have four youth that joined the Youth Joy Explosion Night at David's Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and they represented you well. They sung last night, and they did very well. And I want to thank them personally for being there and, and rendering their service. And that was a beautiful experience for young folk last night, how they worship and praise the Lord. They could have been out doing other things, but these youth who came decided to uplift the name of the Lord and to give them worship and praise. And I was very pleased with the atmosphere of those young folk. Say that for your people. Amen. I know it's redundant, but on behalf of Sister Madison and myself, we want to thank you for your labor of love shown toward us on last Sunday. The many thanks and gifts that you gave was always a blessing to us. Not only just last Sunday, but all that you do for us. And happy thank you to the man. Uh, Seriously, now, those who teach on Wednesday night go through a great sacrifice to prepare lessons. It would be so appreciative of those of you if you would come out and allow the Lord to use and magnify their ministry as they feed you the word of God. And I think that we need teaching now more than ever. When you began to look around our, our not country, but the world, God is doing great things. Let me say it this way. Satan is in high spirit. His disciples and his followers are 24-7 obeying the commandments of their God, Satan. And he is working havoc upon this land and the church. And it appears that the scripture in Ephesians is coming to light in our day wickedness in high places, rulers of the dark, the principalities, and all these things are really coming to fruition. But the church has taken a nap with no spiritual alarm clock, while Satan is doing his job. And you will see the parable of Jesus when he says, those that planted by night, by day went to sleep, and by night, the man of sin took up the seed. And you don't have to wonder about it. Just look at our generation today. Satan has a great stronghold on the church. But God is going to do something that the church is not going to like. God is going to start as James writes to the church that was dispersed and spread. God is going to cause a dysphoria that the church is not going to like. And what God is doing is he's going to shake up his church. And he's going to cause havoc to cause us to spread out and carry that gospel. Now we can do it obediently and truthfully. Our God can cause us to suffer great afflictions in order to get his word out. And those of you who do not come to Bible study, less known study at home, you're going to be opened up to one of the greatest wraths that God is going to let loose. 
And if you think God does not put wrath upon his children, you have to understand the book of Hebrews, to whom he loveth, he chasteneth it and scourge it. So let's get up and do our job. And you can't do a job if you don't learn the job. And you cannot do what you ought to do till you become what you ought to be. And that's children of God. So these young men and young ladies who have prepared their lessons, just don't do it for the sake of doing it. They do it to benefit all of us. So let's come out the Bible study and let's get busy and serious about God's business. You, you, you haven't had a whipping to Jesus. The Father and the Son start whipping. When Mama came in on Saturday night and, and, and pulled the blanket back, the covers back, Mama gave stacked up whippings. And her stacked up whippings was, you remember when? You didn't do it. You get a whipping for everything all at one time. So let's don't let the kingdom of God down by relaxing and doing what we think we ought to be doing rather than what God has assigned us to do. Every soldier in the army of God has a perimeter to keep watching. And we need to be serious about God's business. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's see it out on Wednesday night. Won't you do that? Don't lie in the church. <laughs>
Come on, Michaela. Come on, Michaela.
He certainly did not want to give you and I control over time, especially not relating to one's birth or one's death. And in, in this death, I thought, well, Lord, you say you kept control of this. And he said, yes, Lord, I did. He said, because if I had given you control over the ability to kill, Every time somebody teams you out, you, you put on your ninja suit. Oh, you go, but you drop it all around. And so I thank God that he, he kept control over time. We're going to read Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. We'll skip down to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. It begins where there is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing, a time to search and a time to count as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. 3 and 11 says that he has made everything appropriate in its time. God so constructed his world that different events would come and go on a schedule. He did not create a haphazard world, but one with balance and structure. And structure. Seasons, events, and situations are going to come. Some will be filled with joy. Some with sorrow. Some will be beyond our conception or understanding. And it is those that can shake the very, shake the very core of our foundation of belief. But do know that all has been anchored by God. In Ecclesiastic three, two through eight, seven, several events are mentioned: life and death, planting and harvesting, joy and sorrow, and so on. All are pregnant with purpose and meaning. None of them will be untimely. But the greater purpose in meetings are found in the duration between the two. This duration in between the beginning of man's life and man's death, this is called the planting of the seed and the gathering of the harvest. It is called the gap of grace. The gap of grace is the roar of our patience, the sword of our trust, and the builder of our faith. This gap of grace is not the purpose of a hundred yard dash, but a marathon. <laughs> Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, yes. I knew you. Yes. Y'all yes. not understand how much intimacy is in that scripture. Yes. He says, Before he formed you in the womb, he knew us. Yes. But then he set us apart for his holy purpose. Yes. Not your own, but yes. his. In God's wisdom of his people, he knew that we would struggle with patience, yeah. waiting on him, yeah. with trust, yeah. when, Lord, when is it going to happen, yeah. Yeah. with faith. Is it really going to happen, Lord? Mm -hmm. If I were to call the congregation with the question relating to faith, I would say that we would have a great showing of hands today. Yeah. But the faith that I'm talking about is not the same faith that you have when you go to work and put in 80 hours and hit the clock, and two weeks later, something is deposited directly into an account. That's not the faith I'm talking about. The faith I'm talking about is the faith for the unknown. Yeah. I will trust you, Lord. A faith that not only will I trust you, Lord, but I'll wait on you. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death faith, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. A resilient faith. Sometimes we get too callous with God. Mm -hmm. We don't take the time mm -hmm. to look around mm -hmm. 
and enjoy this journey yeah. and, and look at the glimpse mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. of hope yeah. that he has put before us. Right. <laughs> we, we take too many things for granted. Yeah. We think we did. Yeah. We, we live in a, such a time and everything has to be. Yeah. That's not the God we serve. God yeah. moves at a real slow pace. Yeah, right. And if you if you had any trials or tribulations in your life, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? He doesn't move fast. Yeah. God has established an order in life that often frustrates us as humans. Yeah. Yeah. We do not control our ultimate fate. We cannot be sure of keeping forever what we've accumulated during this short span of life. Be it our money, our homes, our families, etc. If we could change God's order of life, we would. My Lord. My mother and father's departure from earth was timely. Mm. It was time for them to leave me. That's right. Sometimes we struggle with that. Yeah. Why do we want to keep somebody here on this when there's something great? Yeah. I haven't figured that out, and I love my parents dearly. But I can truly tell you, I have not had that burst of tears, that cry, that sorrow for them. Because I know they're in a better place. We should be rejoicing when somebody leaves this me. When I go, don't hold on to me. There we go. It takes the understanding of the essence of God's time in a greater spiritual maturity to understand that Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, their deaths were not untimely and they were not senseless. We, if, the word has already told us that everything he does has purpose and meaning. And, and sometimes it may be hard for us to understand, but we have one firm conviction, and that is that God is in charge. And what he does is right, and because of his, his and because of this, nothing he has a part in it will perish. No one can improve his work. His purpose is always present, whether we realize it or not. I have to admit that when there was no indictment of George Zimmerman, my soul ached with hate for George Zimmerman. I could not grasp why God would allow the murderer of Trayvon Martin to go free. And it was on my job that I spoke this. And even when I spoke it, it didn't taste right. It didn't sound right. But to whom I spoke it to, went back to the back and began praying for me. Because I needed prayer at that moment. I really could not understand it. But what came to me was this. Is that George Zimmerman has not escaped. Because there is a judgment that is coming forth that we all must go by. He has not escaped. Not to couple this week, he said that if he had to do it again, if it meant between taking somebody else's life and saving his own life, he would do it again. I felt sad for him at this point. Because this is that he is what you call a fool. <laughs> That's a fool. <laughs> but we must also know that God judges the wicked and his sheep the same. He doesn't carry two stats. Our judgment is going to be the same as George. There will be no when you did this, but you mm uh -uh. His judgment is on level ground. So we must all be ready for that great day. Ecclesiastic 7 says, God will judge the righteous and the wicked. Since there is a time for every activity and every need. So to George Zimmerman I say, you may not reap where you sow, but you will reap what you sow. Ecclesiastes 3 and 15 says, whatever is, has already been, and whatever will be, already is. God repeats what has passed. There is nothing new under the sun. 
So we need to stop treating our creator, the creator of all things, like he's brand new. How many of you have heard the saying, been there, done that, I got the t-shirt? Well, God is replying back to us, yeah, I've been there, yeah, I've done that. And he said, I got some wicked fools to prove it. <laughs> we should consider that mankind was given the task, which is a blessing of representing God in this world. We are the caretakers, and we bear, and we bear in his image, bear the responsibility to act as God would. God is not a cruel or selfish God, nor is he wasteful or idle. We have to, whatever time God gives us, we should be using for the uplifting of his kingdom. We should not be building a shroud for ourselves down here on earth. Because it, it won't matter. It, it will not matter. When I think about the time and how we don't want to wait on God, I think about Abraham and Sarah. We got any Abraham or Sarah's in here this morning? Anybody willing to take upon the task of having a child well beyond childbearing age? Place for Anybody? And I'm saying this to put that. Although they were beyond childbearing age, they took upon this task because God had made a covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham. And even though they took a different path, God still blessed him. God blessed his son who by, by the slave of Hagar. We, we serve a blessing God. We serve a forgiving God. And we thank God for that because none of us are worthy. We're not worthy of anything that has been bestowed upon us. God is present in each one of our days. When we thank God in the moment, the possibilities to change this world are endless. Yeah. Every day, our eyes should open a little, a little wider to this presence. We should be able to see them, and not just greater, the greater moments yeah. of our day, but in every moment. His nearness will change the way I walk. Yeah. It will change the way I speak to others. Yeah. It will change the way I do my daily routines and answer the call to surrender. Life is but a moment. Be careful how you spend your time. Be careful what we watch on TV. Be careful of the music that we listen to. Because all this feeds your soul. We have to be careful how we're spending our time. If you are not busy in this church doing something, even in it, if, if it is the small task yeah. of folding programs, yeah. Yeah. get up and do something for the Lord. Yeah. Because he has done something for you. Yeah. After church, pick up paper. Do something. Show God that you're, you're gracious for this time. Don't take it for granted because life truly is but a moment. My, my. It's truly but a moment. So, as I close, my pastor told me I need to stay up here longer. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. But as, I take my seat, as I take my seat, I'm going to read a poem to you. And the writer of the poem, her name is Linda Ellis. And she was called the Dash. And the poem reads, I read of a man who stood to speak at the approval of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from beginning to end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following dates with tears. But he said what mattered most was the dash between the years. For the dash represents all the time they spent alive on earth. And not only those who love them knew what little time is worth. For it matters not how much we are, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this lonely heart. Are there things that you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. And we could just slow down and 
let us to consider what truth and real and always try to understand the way other people feel. And be less quick to anger and show appreciation more. And love the people in our lives like we never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and, and more often wear a smile, remembering that the special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read, with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how they spent their dash? Say, Mark, I ask that you continue to be in prayer for me again. This was tough, and the reason why it was tough is because I wasn't totally obedient to his word and, and his instructions. But I can say that even in that God is a forgiving God, he knows my heart, he has some things that he wants Wanda to do. So I ask that you pray for my surrender, my obedience, my continued love for the church, for God, for our pastor, and you. You have a blessed day. Amen. spoke about purpose and it also spoke about the time to fulfill that purpose notice how the text said there is a time a season for everything and then he went on to give some examples of those things and how for every purpose there is a lot of piece of time here in our worship service, we incorporate a time of decision making. We call it call to discipleship. But really what we're hoping to do is give somebody an opportunity to take advantage of a life purpose that God has for them. And with that purpose, there is an allotment of time. Really life doesn't begin the fulfillment of life does not begin until we realize God's purpose for our life. And it starts with a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's when we enter into that relationship with Him that we begin to understand and live out God's purpose for our life. Perhaps there's somebody here today. You, you have not began that journey yet. And if you are here today and you don't know Christ and you, you want to begin to discover God's purpose for your life, this time is for you. That's what this is all about. This time is for you. And we have brothers here who will help assist you with this time of decision making. They will walk you through certain verses of scripture that, that highlights what it means to be a Christian. Help you begin this journey for your life. Or you could be here today and you say, Reverend, I've already begun the journey. I've already accepted Christ. But I don't have a church home. And I need a church home. I need a place where I can come and learn more about God. What God expects of me. How I should live for Him. And God has spoken to me this morning and said, St. Mark is that place. And I want to join. If you're that person today, we want to invite you to come. So two things, two things, two things. If, if you want to accept Christ as your Savior, as your Lord, this is for you. Or if you have already accepted Him, but you, you need a place of, of worship. You need to find a place where you can come in your soul and be nurtured and you can begin to live out again what God has called you to do.
Alvarado that's coming for prayer and he has a testimony. And then Brother Young is also coming for prayer and he also has a testimony. Here from Brother Pepe Brothers. Morning, St. Martin's. I want to tell y'all how much I appreciate all the prayers and stuff that I was in the hospital, you know, five minutes of death, you know. But uh, I just want to appreciate, I just wish I could do more for you. And I love every one of y'all. You know, I come here, and I learned a lot after 10 years. I, I, you know, I, I give God, I give the congregation, everybody, the blessings that y'all give me. I just, you know, I just want to tell y'all thank you for what y'all do for me. And I just wish I could do a lot more. And, it, and I can do. Good morning, St. Martin. I just want to say thank you again for you said as well. You got prayers and everything. You know, the devil is really important. He knocks on my door one day and I want to let him in. So I just want you to continue your prayer for the young family, especially my mom and my dad and me and my wife. But on a good note, yesterday I was came down this house 23 years. And me and my wife were married 23 years. That's a blessing. Let's pray for our two who come. My father, never we thank you for Pepe. Thank you for the blessings and the mercies and grace you've shown upon him. Thank you for touching his body and allowing him to recover. Pray for our brother, Young. Asking, Lord, that you continue to strengthen him to be the man, the father, the husband that you have called him to be. Pray for his family, particularly his mother and father, his wife. Thank you for 23 years of holy natural law. Pray for many, many more. Lord, we just ask that you would just continue to be with these two young men and the family that they represent. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Go in peace, brothers. Let's give Sister Wanda Jackson. She, she, she did a great job. And from the text we saw, we saw how all of us, whether we know it or not, we're on the clock. We're on the clock this morning. It doesn't matter if you're young, or if you're middle-aged, or if you're a senior saint, we are all on the clock. And time is ticking. So we just want to make sure we are about our Father's business. Now we are up to our time of Showing God some love, giving back to Him just a portion of what He has given to us. I get excited about the time of giving because when we give, it says that we have something to give. There are people today who would love to participate in the time of giving, but they can't. But we want to thank God for the opportunity that we do have. So this is this Sunday. If this is your Sunday to give your regular offering, we'll invite you to do so. We've got our two brothers who are standing on behalf of that. Our is going to come and, and give us direction.
thank you for these gifts. We ask your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
I just enjoy just something to buy her. I might have to put you on my uh, income tax. <laughs> but I love you, and, and I just can't stop telling you just how much I love you. And even though it's Women's Day, the fifth Sunday, my heart, I feel like our first lady should always be recognized. Yeah. Thank you all so much to the women's minister today. God bless each and every one of you and continue to put forth much effort to serve God any way that you can to the ministry that you all have been assigned to. Amen. Let us not forget this evening at 3 o'clock at Griggs Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Galley Griggs on 5 will be meeting and please I look to see all of you who can to be there today. Amen? Amen. And let us not forget, it is more than ever prayer time for the church to come together as one and to lift the name of Jesus up. And every one of us have a mandate to go to teach and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us not be ashamed of this gospel that has saved us, that we ought to go out and look in the hedges and the byways as the scripture tells us, and look for those that do not know God, and those that do know God, let's strengthen them, edify them, and build them up so they can be good warriors and disciples on the battlefield for the Lord. Let us not forget, we have a great responsibility more than ever. Satan is at an all time popular high and we need to change. Whenever you can get states to pass laws to make drugs legal with all of the people in prison because of drugs, something is wrong. Whenever you can get the wrong way to become the right way and the wrong right way the wrong way you know the church has much work to do so let us not go to sleep let us get on our knees and after you get off of your knees you get in the fight get in the fight get in the fight and be careful because satan has you on his list amen Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We ask your blessings upon each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, let us feel your pain. And let us have eyes to see what you see. And then make us aware, Lord, of our responsibility and allow your spirit to energize us that we might be armed with the word of God, covered in the full armor that you have, that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And now, may the love, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us, henceforth now and forevermore, as we say together, Thank all of you.